a topic to talk about in a segment, and then I start seeing news stories that kind of relate to that. Even a saying that I referred to earlier this morning, this is one from a writer, and it's going to fit in, and you'll find out how in just a moment. This is a writer that was born in Indiana, and he was born in 1918, grew up in Peoria, Illinois, but he was writing about writing, and he says, imagination is like a muscle. I found out that the more I wrote, the bigger it got. We're going to talk about exercising your brain muscles. I don't think that's probably anatomically correct or physiologically correct, but what's more important than your brain? How small changes in your daily thinking can save it from decline. Don Gamash is the author of that, and I think he's in one of the one of my favorite states. He joins us now. Are you in New Hampshire this morning, sir? Well, actually, we live in New Hampshire, but right now I'm warming up in Florida. Oh, well, Florida's okay, but it sure doesn't beat New Hampshire in my mind. No, no neither. I agree with you. Don Gamash is, uh, is a man who has thought a lot about using the brain. And I used the word in that one quote that I just gave from that other author, imagination is like a muscle. You would agree with that, although you've spent a lot of time in your book concentrating on creativity as something we need to exercise. Well, the reason I uh, spend time on creativity is the best uh, brain exercise uh, is new thoughts. And uh, creativity enables one to have new thoughts uh, all day, anytime, anywhere. Creativity and new thoughts would be what? Uh, as simple as what or as big as what are we talking about? Well, a, uh, a new thought uh, is simply, uh, this is a tough one to handle now, uh, brushing your teeth with the other hand. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Now, it sounds like nothing, but that, that's what the book says. Small changes in your daily habits and routines uh, give you new thoughts. And... Uh, New thoughts are the best brain food, and uh, the brain uh, thrives and uh, grows and gets stronger on, on new thoughts. How much do you mind talking about your current situation? You have um, you were you uh, started suffering effects of multiple sclerosis in what in the mid 1970s, and they progressed since that time. That's correct. Uh, and uh, the thought uh, has occurred to me that people uh, with a handicap. Uh, necessarily, if, if they don't give up, if they necessarily, uh, you know, they have to look for new ways to do things, and doing things in a new way uh, is creatively stimulating. So uh, a handicap is a, is, a, is a plus mentally if your objective is to try to live a life as uh, normal as possible and get around all the obstacles that the handicap presents. Let me uh, give you a couple of quotes from a story that I read in the New York Times almost exactly a week ago. And the, the Headline on the story said, A Sharper Mind, Middle Age and Beyond. It was a story that was written by Patricia Cohen, a reporter for the New York Times, author of In Our Prime, The Invention of Middle Age. I thought of that when I was reading your book because in her article she said that there was a study and it showed that everyone in the study who regularly did more to challenge their brains, either by reading, writing, attending lectures, or completing word puzzles, did better on what is termed fluid intelligence. Fluid intelligence is um, one of two categories. The other one is crystallized intelligence. Fluid intelligence is abilities that produce solutions not based on experience like pattern recognition. It's something that generally as we get older we are less adept at. And uh, I, I just thought it was interesting quotes from her talking about education, regular mental workouts pay off. Is that what you found in your research also? Well, actually, I didn't find it out in research. I found it out in life uh, because uh, I have uh, spent my career dealing with hard-nosed executives who were pretty, uh, pretty skeptical about everything. And uh, what I found was that uh, when they began to, you know, understand some of these concepts and use them, uh, it changed their ways of thinking in, in business, and it changed their ways of thinking in life. And they, they told me about it. They said, you know, I really didn't believe this at all. And uh, now I'm a, I'm a true believer. Give us an example or two of how you approached a, a, a executive and said, consider this. What were you trying to sell them or help them to, to step through? Well, I was trying to get them to uh, move into uh, new business areas and new product areas. So, of course, they're very, very comfortable with the products and the businesses that they're in, but they realize that they're in decline. They're going to have to do something new. But there was a rigidity in the uh, in the whole culture that prevented uh, new ideas from surfacing and being supported. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what they were trying to do. And uh, so when they started to find out that this approach worked, uh, they they bought it hook, line, and sinker. Were these executives of all types, of all ages? 
Uh, I would say that uh, typically the guys I was working with were in their in their 50s. The top executives were in their 50s, maybe early 60s. But then they had their uh, you know their, their deputies and their surrogates who were in their 30s and 40s. Hmm. So there was an age spectrum typically that ran from the 30 to early 60. You speak, speak uh, oftentimes in your book about learning curves, climbing the learning curves. It's a brain exercise. Give us some example of what you mean by that. Well, a, a learning curve is when you approach uh, something that uh, you have no experience with. And I think uh, I probably mentioned the, the computer, mm -hmm. that uh, when someone first gets a computer, it's very, very intimidating. And uh, very, very slowly they, they kind of start to learn how to use it. And then they, it is what I call climbing the learning curve. And after a period of time, which is, uh, you know, very idiosyncratic, everybody's different, they get to the point where they feel they have a, a high level of confidence, and they, they didn't start there. And uh, I, I like to, to, to say this to, to young children, too. You know, you, you never you never did this before, so don't expect you're going to do it right the first time. You're going to have to start learning and climbing the learning curve. And many people approach a subject and they say, well, you know, I've never done it before, but uh, I'm not going to be able to do it, and uh, they uh, they quit right away because they can't do it perfectly the first time. Interesting how your what you just said follows right into what I was saying a moment ago about that New York Times article. Because if I could quote another sentence from there, it's a study that said adults, particularly men with low levels of education, in this particular study could also improve mental function by using a computer. Researchers are not sure why. They speculate that computers required users to switch mental gears more frequently or process information in a new way which quickened reaction time so there it again backs up exactly what you're saying oh absolutely absolutely and the thing that uh, you know when i started to write this book i said to myself you know this is probably going to be aimed at the uh, you know the market of 50 and over and recent research reported in the new york times that we start to lose our, our quote fluid intelligence or cognitive abilities uh early uh, you know in our in our late 30s 40s and we declined by X percent, and then a little later by Y percent. And, but uh, they also found that by stimulating one's brain and getting brain exercise, that the, the effects are very long-lasting. And you want so the sooner you start, the better, you're, better off you are. And you want to emphasize again, you're not t talking about making a drastic change of, of uh, well, you could make a drastic change of moving or doing this or that, but small little changes, because at the end of your book, you're talking about how just in your daily life, just go through your daily life and pick out some of the, some of the things that now we just do without giving much thought to it and say, what if I did this? differently yes because I, I feel that uh, what happens to most people is that uh, they become so familiar with what they're doing it becomes such an ingrained habit that their brain goes on what I call autopilot and they don't they don't use their brain at all they're, they're, they're active they're doing things all day long but they're, everything they're doing is habit and uh, they uh, they don't get any brain exercise it's gonna be like uh, I'm sorry. No, no, I was just going to say this can mean like taking a different route to work or uh, eating something different for your breakfast or for your snack or for your lunch. That's the point. Small changes, small changes that break habits and form, you know, uh, new ways of thinking and looking at things are the, the exercise your brain needs. Um, it'll make things more interesting, I guess, because you won't be doing it just on autopilot. That's exactly right. I, I like to think that uh, you started out with the brain as a muscle. And I say that, uh, well, you know, if the brain is a muscle and you don't use it, you're going to get a pot belly in your head. Uh, I'd like to avoid that if I could. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I most people would. Uh, do you want to leave us with any thought about this before we're out of time? Uh, no, I, I guess uh, all, all, all I can say is that that anyone can start at any time to make their brain healthier. There are a lot of people who walk and do exercises for their body, but they have to realize that unless they do exercises for their brain, their brain will get out of shape. Yeah. And uh, when we're out of shape, uh, physically uh, we know it, but uh, we don't walk on our brain, so uh, we're not aware of it. Yeah, and tailor those needs to meet your own personal taste and what your own challenges that you want, and find a learning curve to climb, and once you climb that, find another one. Uh, that's going that's to keep your exactly brain active. Right. Uh, nice to talk to you. Thanks for your time this morning.
Okay, thanks an awful lot, David. Bye-bye. The book is called What's More Important Than Your Brain. Donald Gamash is the author of that. Again, I'll post that on our website. You're listening to Newstalk 1400 KFRU. The time is 8.56. Yes, I'm walking under my bed.